in this second part of a two-part video documentary where I'm in Gengu Chan National Park which covers nearly 3,000 square kilometers and is Thailand's biggest and arguably best national park. Join me as I initially go in search of a tiny kingfisher but then end up looking for something much much bigger when I hear a loud noise and realize that there's something close by. In part one I was down by the river where although I didn't manage to find the loud noise I did photograph a beautiful bird and then at night I had a visit right near the tent with this awesome creature. We begin part two as any camping or wildlife photography video should begin with a coffee. It was about 4.30 in the morning and I was up to try to get out of the campsite about an hour or so earlier than we were allowed to in search of, well, leopards. Lots of squashed elephant poop. One making a noise there before, I could hear it, but it stopped the car a bit further back. <coughs> that loud screeches. And of course, we had the visit last night at the campsite, so it's a bit late. Beginning of elephant road carnage. Obviously when they come out from the side there they don't pick and choose when and how to <laughs> clear the road or not. Yeah, here we are now approaching Leopard Lane, I'll call it. So best thing is just to go slowly, get on for me. Look is on our side. It's always exciting driving back along the road before sunrise, especially because you're not allowed to. And although I didn't see any snakes or elephants or once again leopards, it's still an enjoyable drive in the early morning. I went back to camp, made myself a bit of breakfast and then decided to head on up past the first and second stream crossing in search of anything. And luckily I met a few other guys who were in search of something in particular, I decided to join them. Right, so we left the trail right at the point where it says it's down the trail. And we're there. Heading up, 
again as I say right where the elephant is not just was but is but I have to keep my eyes up Oops. this spot belly eagle owl is somewhere up here so it's during the daytime it's going to be sleeping and it'll be anywhere but it's in this area a kilometre square half a kilometre square Case of looking, I've got two patrols going. I've got a Dutch guy, Mikhail, and the guy from Ubon set off from the other side over that way along the path and come back over the top. And we've come up from here the guy from Bangkok and the one from Bakchon, me. After an hour or so walking in the heat off trail, we didn't manage to see the spot-bellied eagle owl, or hear the spot-bellied eagle owl, or even get any indication of where the spot-bellied eagle owl might be. I decided to head back down, and I was glad I did, because not only did I manage to get my best shots to date of gibbons, but I met that beautiful bird again. Can the gibbons, but... Oh, there it is. It's the noise of the orange breasted trogon. Choo 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 choo. Choo 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 choo. I was again really lucky to get a little bit of footage of this beautiful bird from the front because again, unlike every time I see it, it prefers to sit with its back to me. I mean it has a lovely back to be fair, but with a name like the Orange Breasted Trogon you really want to get shot from the front. I was in luck though, it seemed to like me, and we played a game of it moving along a few meters and me following it and videoing it and photographing it for a while and then it moving on again. It was aware of me being there and it seemed really really comfortable with me being there and I was just really happy to get some nice video footage as well as some cracking shots. <laughs> I would like to add at this point that the only reason that I managed to finally find this bird and get video and photographs of it was by listening out for its call. And as Brian Hewitt always says, learn the call and find the bird. And that has been fantastic advice for me over the last year or so. Thank you, Brian. If you don't know Brian, he's got a great website called Thai Bird Spot, and he posts brilliant videos as well as photographs of birds around Thailand. And often in Gengachan. Well, that was it anyway. 
So I'm back up here again, just past the second stream crossing. So it must be about 2.1 kilometers from the, uh, from the exit of Bangkrang. So that we know, because 2.3 kilometers, another 200 meters up here should be the, uh, the trail off to the right. I might reckon I'll have a wander up the road, I think. Right, <coughs> mid-afternoon, really the hottest time of the day, so very little chance of seeing anything, but I'm heading back up across the first and then probably across the second stream. Um, hopefully uh, there'll be some brown hornbills again, that they were sort of from this time onwards yesterday, um, up there, <coughs> where I was this morning, of course, and saw the... Uh, the trogan and the uh, gibbons and the uh, great hornbills and I've decided to come up here rather than um, head on the little trail from the campsite there which uh, is not a good idea and there's three Thai blokes who I was with this morning they've they've gone back along the trail there because the elephants there it's only about 60 meters in there from the trail entrance it was up here uh, this morning in the river and it made its way back down we walk back down the trail looking for this uh, spotted, uh, sorry, spot, spotted bellied, spot bellied eagle owl. Spotted eagle owl, I can't remember what it's called. Um, and then the, the elephant was there and it was on the, uh, on the path somewhere in front. You could smell it and hear it. And one of the lads, a Dutch bloke, he decided to keep going. I said, well, you be careful. Anyway, he came back, said, yeah, it was right there in the middle of the path. <coughs> he rounded the corner quietly looked and it was just standing there. And there's not much space to move either way for either you or the elephant to get out of the way. So we came back down and I went to the uh, to the office and told them, I said, don't let anybody in this trail entrance mine because the elephant's only about 60 metres up there. And it was right on the path. Um, but unfortunately there were no rangers there. I told a couple of people, but some people had gone in. I just met some people who, I was too late to tell them, but they'd gone in. Luckily they'd seen it and they came back out. They didn't try to get round it. But the three tie blocks had gone in there and they're sitting nearby where it is, waiting for it to come out of the thick bamboo. Uh, but there's not a lot of space, and if it loses its temper, there's nowhere to really go. Um, I considered going in, but you know what, it's not worth it. It's not worth it just to get a bit of something for YouTube and get some more likes, and there's the elephant in daylight that I saw last night walking up the river next to the campsite and saw this morning from afar in the thicket. I'm not gonna chase after it, and I'm not, certainly not gonna go along a path uh, where it's there right in front of me um, in broad daylight it's a big male so I'm not even entertaining the idea sure could get some cracking shots of it and some good video footage once it comes out very close and it's well lit no not worth it not worth it I've got a daughter and a wife and a life and more videos to make in the future. So there we are. So brown hornbills, here we come. And I was in luck. I managed to find one. To me, what is the most beautiful of the hornbills? Tekel's brown hornbill. I'd seen a pair of them flying around the day before looking for a nesting place, which like own hornbills would be a big hole in a tree. So I knew the area that they might be in. But I owe this find to a local guide who waved me down and showed me that if we wandered down into the forest there'd be a good vantage point. Unfortunately I'd left the tripod in the car, it was a very hot afternoon and I struggled to balance the 500 lens on my camera bag to try to get video footage, but never mind, you get the idea. Better than nothing. You know, here <laughs> come, 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 come long time video time. I'm tripod, my, 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 no, no, my black up my Welcome. 
uh, previously thought to be one species, the brown hornbill. They're now divided into Tickell's brown hornbill and Austin's brown hornbill. Tickell's brown hornbills are found mainly on the western side of Thailand and the Burmese border and they're in forests like Gengochan. They're not too plentiful of course like most hornbills they suffer from habitat loss especially in the form of logging and they are currently at a near threatened status. I was very happy to see this male. A few hours later I met up with my buddies Mike, Jamie and Jamie's cousin Dylan and after they'd got this tent set up and we'd had some food in the natter, we set off into the jungle again after dark in search of snakes and owls. Right. Out in search of the uh, spot-bellied eagle. We just heard a collared scops over there as we left the road and came up here. We're kind of halfway between stream one, stream two, and we left the path. Now we're heading back down towards stream one. Oh, 50 meters up. We didn't have any luck finding an owl, but it's always just so exciting to sneak out of the campsite when you're really not supposed to leave after 6 pm for obvious reasons. There's just too many wild animals out there, it's too dangerous. But we did manage to see a pit viper near the campsite before we had a few um, soft drinks and a bit of a chat and then hit the sleeping bags. We were up early the next morning, not too early for a coffee, and then we had the difficult dilemma of do we drive back out towards the entrance of the park to look for leopards, or do we head further up past the stream crossings to look for leopards. We decided to head up past the stream crossings, but we didn't get very far. Morning escapades. Can't drive on, can we? No. We've got to leave the car down there. Because the elephant's just up ahead. Oh, I see it, Mike. No, I don't see a shadow. He's moved on up the road there. It was now just after 5am, still dark, and although we weren't really too bothered about moving all of the bamboo that the elephant had just left behind, we could hear it just a few hundred metres up above. A guide who was in a hurry to take people up to Penantung to see the, uh, what do you call it, the sea of mists and the sunrise, obviously working on getting up there to get his money. He had much more urgency to clear the road. And if he wanted to clear the road, fair enough. But let him drive on first. I wasn't too keen on driving up alongside a big male elephant on a one-way road, which is not very wide, with nowhere to get off either side. So we followed him up, and we watched the elephant disappear into the night. It was just fantastic seeing it there. Before dawn right in front of us. But as always, you have to bear caution. It's not a good idea to get too close, or make a noise, or shine, shine headlights on an elephant. We were careful, and the elephant was comfortable. What we didn't realise right then, is that only an hour or so later, we were going to meet him again, in much closer and much more dangerous circumstances. Oh, 
Okay, and the second trail we've come in about 100 meters. And luckily, I think it was Jamie spotted it. And we'll have to be very quiet and we'll have to go back out. We were really torn. Here was a chance to get some fantastic photos and video of an elephant in the wild right there in front of us in almost daylight. But what happened was a bit worrying. He knew we were there, he pinned his ears back and then he started flapping his ears, which was a first warning sign. He then stamped and started swinging his trunk and pulling vines. That was the signal to get out. Right, heading back out. For obvious reasons, there's the elephant in there, and yeah, it's close to the path there, it's about 50 meters up. So, we'll leave that path for now. Much as I wish we'd stayed there, we made the right decision. He was about to charge, and there was nowhere to hide. Hello, yeah, lovely little spider. I don't want to disturb him, I don't want to touch him. Oh god, I can't even get a stick to... Is that... Nice! Stylish! For that red, red zip for right hand side. I'll tell you what, you could almost... The youth of today would pay lots of money for stupid things like that. As long as you get it endorsed by either can you Muppet or a BTS or a K-pop band? Not David Beckham anymore. Look at that. Official attire of the Qatar um, after World Cup cleanup. <laughs> he's gone, he's gone, he's down of oh. I got my got this out. You know that I'm gonna fall in now because I was laughing at him and trying to video it. Smash all this equipment. Oh dear. Uh, I'm going to fall in with all my camera and new, oh, I mean my lens. So now just at the end of the uh, at vanilla trail before where it comes out into the road about 20 meters from the road. Uh, we found what we're after, which is these. Um, describe as mini Raphaelicias before I can find out what the, the name is. There we go. So, this is the, the top campsite, not as in Penantung, but the top of Ban Grang campsite. And uh, somewhere I've never never camped up at this one, but we always come up here, or I always do, uh, hanging around the toilet blocks, uh, looking for snakes because I've seen a few here. Uh, nearly every time I've come up, but they've kind of drained the whole area and it's dry and they've cut stuff back So there's probably gonna be less chance uh, But at this time of night, it's just it's just stunning Look at over the, the hillside. I think the bears live somewhere down in there They've come up, but uh, what a beautiful light uh, I've just seen the Indian roll on on this tree from afar And got some nice shots of that, although it's an Indian roller, but absolutely stunning um, so there's a big valley behind if there are any big raptors coming across they'll be easy to see i'm going to stay here a few minutes because I'm, I'm actually up here looking for the yellow and black uh, black and yellow i thought sure uh broadbills which are just um just over there this morning i didn't see them somebody else did so hopefully they'll be there this evening as well but the chances of me spotting one in a tree in a yellow tree um yellow leaves would... let's see it was time to head back to Bangkok, and I didn't see any yellow and black broadbills, but it didn't matter. It had been a fantastic few days, as always. <laughs>